Hi, I'm Brian. I am one of the members here at Living Springs Community Church and it's my real joy and privilege to uh, share a few thoughts with you uh, this morning. Um, so let's just pray. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your love and your great mercy. And Lord, as we come around your word, I pray that you would just take hold of it and Lord, let it speak to us, let it achieve something in us that uh, is so right and perfect for us at this moment in time. Uh, Lord, we just want to open ourselves up to hear what you're saying. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, in case you haven't noticed, uh, it's coming up to Christmas time. Um, if you're looking at this in the middle of the summer, well, it was Christmas time when uh, we sat down and thought about these things. And um, I was put on my heart about uh, um, Zacharias. Zacharias was the father of John. And uh, if we look in the Gospel of Luke, right there in the beginning, it talks about how his birth came about and the circumstances surrounding that. So I'm going to pick up a few thoughts uh, that I hope will encourage us, maybe inspire us um, as God takes hold of them. They're not my thoughts, I hope, I hope that they're God's thoughts. But In uh, Luke uh, chapter 1, uh, reading from verse 5, uh, we read these. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in the commandments and requirements of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both advanced in years. Now it happened that while he was performing his priestly service before God, in the appointed order of his division, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord to burn incense, and the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside in the hour of the incense offering. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zacharias was troubled when he saw the angel, and fear gripped him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know this? For certain, for I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. The angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring to you this good news. Behold, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which were fulfilled in their proper time. The people were waiting for Zacharias and were wondering at his delay in the temple. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized he had seen a vision in the temple and he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when the days of his priestly service were ended, he went back home. And after these days, Elizabeth, his wife, became pregnant and she kept herself in seclusion for five months, saying, This is the way the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked with favour upon me to take away my disgrace among men. So the context of this story, it's always important to understand the, the culture of the times and what was actually going on, is that Zacharias was uh, one of the priestly tribe, and uh, they used to go... Uh, and serve at the temple, which was in Jerusalem, which was a big deal, uh, twice a year. And when they would go there, those two times a year, they would cast lots, and the lot would be uh, to decide who would actually go into the actual temple proper and to uh, trim the wicks and to burn the incense and to, uh, and to tend to all that in the holiest of holies, which is where uh, the presence of God was, was represented in that sense where they had all of these incredible things. So to go into the Holy of Holies, to go into the temple to burn incense, this was a once in a lifetime thing. This was a, a, a something that, that you would always 
possibly anticipate for the future. It's a bit like a wedding. You know, you, you wonder when you have daughters growing up what the wedding will be like and, you know, will I walk it down the aisle and what will happen? And, and now I look back at my daughter's wedding and with great fondness and many great memories uh, of that wonderful day. It was a once in a lifetime thing, uh, hopefully. And uh, well, you know, that's how it was for, for Zacharias. And so he's there, but Zacharias and his wife, it, it says there right in the last sentence that we read, it says that uh, God will look with favor upon me to take away my disgrace among men. So Zacharias and Elizabeth, it says that uh, they, they were righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. They were good people. If you needed something, you'd go to them. If you were, if you were hurting, if you were, were whatever, they were good people. They were people that would be there for you. You know, that they were the salt of the earth. I'm sure they were a great pleasure to be around. Yet they lived with disgrace and failure for so many years. It was regarded that there must have been sin in Elizabeth's life or Zacharias's life. There must have been something which they had done wrong or maybe their parents had done wrong with the sins being visited upon the children. And it would be regarded that they were failures to some extent and degree because Elizabeth was barren. And yet in their failure or in their disappointment and in, their, in the collapsing of their dreams, they remained faithful to God. Now, there is a lesson for us for today. I've been a, a Christian since 1978, and I have known good times, hard times, great times, challenging times. I can look back and say that God has been consistently good, and he's been favourable to me all the time. And, and when I think about these things, you know, um, if I think about Zacharias, it, it takes something to remain faithful in disappointment. Other people will be quick to lavish judgment, will be try to, to reach out and correct you and tell you what you're doing wrong or what you need to change. But Zacharias and Elizabeth knew in their heart they were doing what was right in God and God acknowledged that and recognized that in them. But they lived with the stigma of failure. And so for Zechariah to be chosen to go into the Holy of Holies, this was a, a high honor, something of, of great worth and value to both of them. Elizabeth wasn't there, but I'm sure she would have looked on with pride and gratitude and, and wonder that her husband, you know, part of her in that sense, uh, was involved in, in this service. So there he is in the temple. It takes a lot of preparation. You have to you know, wear certain clothes and certain rituals and all this type of stuff. It's not just not uh, open a door and nip in there and just, just you know, do what you need to do. It was a big deal. There he is in there. And whilst he's in there, he sees an angel. It says at the right of the hand side of the altar. Now, remember, he's there on his own. So for an angel to be there, this is, <laughs> this is an even bigger deal. And, and, and it goes on to say when, when they were talking, and um, the angel answered in verse 19, it says, the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel. So this wasn't just any angel. This was Gabriel. So there were three archangels uh, when God originally uh, created them. Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Lucifer, we know, decided that he wanted God's job, was cast out of heaven. Michael, we read about in various other parts of the Bible. And there's Gabriel. And Gabriel is there. Not just any angel, Gabriel is there speaking to Zachariah. And the the opening the opening words amused me, but the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias. Do not be afraid. I'm in the Holy of Holies, once in a lifetime thing. There is this great big angel type dude standing there, and you're telling me not to be afraid? When I read scriptures and I see angels, you know, often that's the time to be very afraid because God's going to do something. And when God does something, it never, uh, it, it doesn't always go the way you think that it should. Very often it's different. Very often there's something unique uh, that God does. So there is this angel standing before God. And he says this, to him, he says, uh, your petition has been heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. Now, I don't think that either Elizabeth or Zacharias were still praying this prayer. 
He's an old man. She's advanced in years. I think the, they had come to terms with the fact that for whatever reason, this just wasn't going to happen. But they remained committed to each other. They remained committed to God. And God honoured them for that. But the angel says, your petition has been heard. And Zacharias like, really? Like, now? Like, uh, hang on. I, you know? He, he looked reasonably at the circumstance that he faced himself in. He, he, I don't think what he said was unreasonable in the, in the logical sense of things. But what he said was unreasonable when you've got the archangel standing in the presence of God telling you that something is about to happen. What can we learn from this for us today? First of all, we need to remain faithful in our disappointments. We need to be honourable even when things don't go our way or the way we think that they should. We should be prepared for God to do amazing and unusual things. And don't write yourself off. If, you, if for whatever reason, oh, I haven't got a husband, I haven't got a job, I'm too old, I'm too this, I'm too, I'm too sick, I'm too whatever it might be, do not write yourself off. If God can take Zacharias and Elizabeth at their time of life and turn it all around completely, then God can do something for you in you, with you, and through you. And remember, all those prayers of all those years, those pleadings, I am sure they wept many, many tears. I'm sure there was much heartache. I'm sure every time of the month that it came around in those earlier years were just filled with hope and then crushing disappointment as once again, Elizabeth remained barren and no baby came their way. Sure, they knew ups and downs. Maybe, oh, there's a chance I might be, and then crushing defeat as, no, I'm not. They knew all this, but they remained faithful, righteous and honourable to God. And so, Zacharias is a mature Christian. Well, you know what I mean. It was a mature child and servant of God, questioned what God was saying. Guilty. Yeah, I've questioned big time. I've known God speak. I've heard the word of God. I've received the prophetic words. And the more God has said that, the more that seems to happen. And there have been times where I've remained honourable, loyal and faithful. And there are times when I've been discouraged, downheartened, crushed, in despair and even defeated. But God has remained faithful. He's never, ever let me go. Even, even when I've grown cold in his sight, and I, I, I believe he understands, but there is a requirement on you and on me when we've known God. Uh, it doesn't really matter for how long, it's the depth of the knowledge that you have. And if you've known God a long time, but there is no depth to your experience, then I'll challenge you. Let God visit you this Christmas time. Let God come into your very personal space and start speaking to you and challenging you and pulling you, drawing you towards him. Because uh, sorry about that. <laughs> My computer just uh, decided to, to go to sleep. Because there are many things that God wants for you, God has for you. But if, you know, there is a responsibility on you and on me to fan the flames of our faith. So as we come to this Christmas time, maybe let us take, a, take stock. You know, if I was Zacharias, I would probably say the same things. So maybe I need to be a little bit more like Mary, because Mary, when she was, you know, at least, at least Zachariah and Elizabeth had each other, Mary had nobody in that context. She had nobody in that sense. Yet she didn't doubt what God said. She just said, well, how will this be? Because I'm a virgin. When the angel told her that uh, she was going to have a baby and that she, he was going to be the son of God and call his name Jesus. So she had a slightly different attitude. Okay, God, if you say it, just let me know the details that I need to know. Whereas Zacharias was, okay, God, you said it, but I think I know better because I'm old. She's old. It ain't going to happen. Whereas God says, and I'm God. Nothing's too difficult for me. And God would speak to you in your life. And 
I'm God. I can do the amazing things in your life that I've promised and that I have said. But remember this, in your disappointment and in your shattered dreams that maybe you've experienced, just maybe God needs people to go through these things at times. Because if you go through these things and remain honourable and loyal and faithful, then we have a message to other people who are going through the same thing. And I think about this. God sits on his throne. So, you know, we, we have uh, children, we have foster children. And um, so the, the bedroom of the foster child is, is our home. It's our rules. It's, it's, it's our bedroom in that context. But I don't just open the door and walk in. I knock. I wait to be invited. Now, I might challenge the, um, you know, try and find out where the floor is. I'm sure it's down there somewhere. I, I, I might pick up on certain issues. But I don't just barge in. I wait to be invited. And then I have to work with foster children because they usually come from a damaged and challenging background to be able to communicate with them in a way that they can understand and then get their buy-in to actually get them to start the side of the room and stuff like that. And God's like that in your life and in mine. Bad things happen to you sometimes because of other people. You know, I've done the wrong thing for the right reason. I make mistakes. And I've had to apologise to people. And I'm sure I will have to again. My wife nearly made a mistake. It was on a Tuesday, about half past ten, back in the early 80s. But apart from that, the rest of us, we make mistakes, we get things wrong, but we move forward. We have to forgive others, we have to forgive ourselves, and we move forward. So Zacharias was, uh, he came out of the temple and uh, he communicated, he remained there until the, his, his period of service for those two weeks was complete. And then he went home, and this is after these, this Elizabeth became pregnant. And during her pregnancy, Mary came to visit Elizabeth. And when Mary came to visit, she walked in through the door. door. It says that the, the John was filled with the Holy Spirit at that point. You know, amazing. So it's, it's, the word that Zachariah had was, his life would be filled with joy and gladness. Now, just because he got it wrong at that point, did the joy and gladness stop? Oh, no. He was mute, but he was still joyful. He couldn't speak, but I'm pretty sure he was glad. Um, maybe Elizabeth was very glad. I don't know. But the point is, is that what God had said still happened. And even though those prayers which had been, prayers which had been prayed so many years ago, which maybe had stopped, God did not forget. And at the appropriate time, they came to pass. They couldn't, God couldn't answer that prayer before because the answer to that prayer was going to be so special. It had to be for an appointed time. And that appointed time was when Mary was ready for Jesus to be born in, in those times and in those circumstances. And so therefore God couldn't answer Zacharias and Elizabeth's prayer earlier for John because it wasn't the appropriate time. And so uh, Mary comes to stay. Uh, Elizabeth uh, keeps it kind of quiet because uh, she doesn't want to flaunt it. Uh, she kind of uh, treasures these things and, and values the fact that, you know, people had looked on her that she was a disgrace, but she knew she had God's favour. Don't view yourself as a disgrace. If you've made mistakes, acknowledge them before God. Accept what comes, put right anything that you can, and then move on. And then step into the favour that God has for you. And if your blessings are being delayed, don't lose heart, but value the season that you're in. And like Elizabeth and Zacharias, serve God righteously, honourably, favourably. Give, be generous, honour people, do what you can do in your disappointment and in the delay. And so John is born and, um, and uh, you know, it says, um, you know, at the time, 
had come for Elizabeth to give birth and she gave birth to a son. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> her neighbours and her relatives heard that the Lord had displayed his great mercy toward her and they were rejoicing with her. And it happened on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they were going to call him Zacharias after his father. But his mother answered and said, no, indeed, but he should be called John. And they said to her, no one among your relatives is, is going to be called by that name. And they made signs to the father as to what they, he wanted him to be called. And he asked for a tablet and wrote as follows, his name is John. And fear came all those who were living about them. And then Zacharias' tongue is loosed. And what's the first thing he does? He was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied and saying, blessed be the God of Israel. For he has visited us and accomplished the redemption of his people. He has raised up the horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant. And he just he just uh, utters these words, uh, these, these these this great pro proclamation. So after nine months or plus of saying nothing, the first thing that comes out is praise to God, is worship and adoration, and uh, and, and and all these things. And you know we can take out several bits of encouragement of what he said for us today. First of all, God is gonna visit us. God visited Zacharias in the temple. God visited Elizabeth in her womb. God visited them as a couple in their circumstances. God came to this earth at Christmas time and God wants to visit you today in your home, in your life, in your circumstance. Now it could be that you've not known God at all You've heard about it, you're curious, you've been drawn to some of these things. God wants to meet you personally. He wants you to open your life to him. He wants to come into your life. He wants to visit with you and to stay. And some things will change. And some things you will be challenged on. But I say this, in all my years of being a Christian, God has never let me down. He's not always done what I wanted or what I thought, but he's... He's never let me down. He's been faithful, honourable, true and just. He's been the best friend anybody can ever have. He's been a father to me even when I didn't have a father. And despite all the circumstances, I can look back and say, God, you have been there and you have been good. And if you've known God for a long time, let him back into your life. Let him back into your marriage. Let him back into your business. Let him back into your home. He wants to visit with you and he wants to stay. He is ruling over all. <clears throat> God <clears throat> sets boundaries over things that can happen to you. Yeah, bad things happen. People say and do terrible things. But in those terrible things, God is honourable and true. He'll save us from those who are against us. And sometimes there are challenges um, when people come against us. But you know, just because things are happening against us doesn't give us, us an excuse as a Christian to behave badly. No, always do the right thing. Doesn't matter what anyone else says. Doesn't matter what anyone else does. You compare yourself to who God wants you to be. And in the midst of those challenges, in the midst of those trials, in the midst of that unjust accusation that might come your way, speak the truth, be honourable, be righteous, be good. And uh, get to a place where you can serve him without fear. Um, because through us, through you, through your lifestyle, you know, God, God will work things in you and through you. He will bless you abundantly, and people will look and think, "Wow, I want some of that. I want to be involved. I want, I want the experience of that person to be my experience in my context." Yes. So this Christmas time, if it's for the first time. Let God visit you. If it's for a renewed visit, welcome him back. Cause him to stay. His love for you has been shown through the fact that he came, through the fact that he still cares, through the fact that he still speaks, through the fact that he hears your prayers, knows your need, and he will answer you. And finally, word for me, word for you, God's not finished with you yet. He has things that he has prepared for you to do. He has things that uh, only you can do for him. There are people, there are contacts, there are circumstances, situations that you have a voice to speak into, that you have actions that you can do. Because God has purpose 
over you. You have purpose in your life because you were of great worth and value to him. Don't let anybody rob you. So this Christmas time, God with us. God with you. God with me. Lord, just visit us this Christmas time in a way that you will come and stay. Not in a way that you will come and, um, you know, uh, that we will let you go. Lord, it will be something of great worth and value that will just grow and grow and grow. So we give ourselves to you and we invite you into our lives and into our circumstance. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to finish our service with our final song. Thank you very much.